Messner, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Nice to see you. Good to see good. you. Good. Where are you? Uh, I'm actually out in New York. Uh, I'm visiting one of my good friends from college. Oh, nice. Oh, weren't you up there skiing this past weekend or something? Yeah, yeah. I was actually up in, uh, we drove up from New York City to Vermont, uh, and we went skiing up in Killington. So it was pretty Killington? Cool. Yeah, Killington, Vermont. Because believe it or not, they actually have like a pretty big mountain up there. So um, I was surprised, but it was like probably like a few thousand feet vertical drop. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I've been to Killington, Vermont uh, when Hub was like a year, I think. Hub oh, went up size with us. Yeah, I mean, it's a yeah. good size hill. Better better than anything in Chicago, I'll say that. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. So. It's definitely good uh, for learning on for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Was it powder? Was the powder nice or was it icy? Uh, the first day was pretty icy. The second day it was actually really nice. So they have a lot of snow. They did. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know exactly how much, but they didn't really, a few of the runs had like snow machines going. But, you uh, are my March golden guests on Astro podcast. Sweet. And you're here to talk about the new business you started after I retired from was it trading yeah yeah quant trading trading yeah so um yeah okay. basically i i used to work in high frequency trading for about two years out of college and um you know it was interesting work i really enjoyed it it was just i think uh it was a bit too much like on the hours i was working like 11 hour days monday through friday kind of got a little burnt out by that um so okay. you know made the tough decision to kind of walk away and try something new. So um, I've always been like pretty interested in fitness through college. Uh, I played college baseball and, you know, I realized, you know, there's an opportunity I could use the, the kind of knowledge I built up there and the skills I kind of learned along the way about building workouts, building a nutrition plan and apply that to helping other people on a similar journey, achieve their fitness goals. So that's basically how the business works right now. It's one-on-one -on -one coaching for people in, in busy jobs um, who, you know, maybe feel like they don't have time to work out or feel like uh, they are just like missing, missing some accountability or they're just for whatever reason, they haven't been able to achieve their fitness goals. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's no, no worries. Um, so yeah, so the business is called Snurf Fit. Um, it's basically, like I said, it's one one on one coaching for people in busy jobs, um, trying to help them uh, basically meet their fitness goals, whether it's losing weight, building muscle, um, just developing a better overall routine. Uh, so yeah, that's basically, that's basically how it is. Um, and I've, I've found, you know, most of my clients I'm finding through social media, especially through Twitter. Um, that's kind of the platform. Basically. Okay. So it's for busy people who may not have time to work out who are professionals like you, you used to be, but now you have retired from that a little bit. Yeah. And so you found a way to work out when you're really busy. Now you're helping other people do it, right? And they can find you on Twitter mostly. Yeah, on Twitter. So it's at snur underscore fit um, is my is my username there. Uh, Twitter is the biggest okay. platform. I'm also on Instagram with the same same username, but a lot bigger on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, so you so were a okay. pitcher in college. Yep. And um, so you were always working out as a college athlete. Where did you right? go to school? Exactly. I went to Caltech. And that is like a very uh, smart school, is it not? Yeah, it is. I, I appreciate that, first of all. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would say Caltech, it's funny because I think a lot of people don't really know a lot about it. Um, it's like a really small school and it's only like a thousand undergrads. And sometimes when I tell people like, oh, I went to Caltech, it's not like it doesn't have like the name recognition of like Harvard or uh, MIT or Stanford or school like that. but. It is like on par, like academically with them. Um, so, yeah, it's I don't know. It, it's it's kind of funny that I when I tell people that sometimes they just they get I get a whole like mix of reactions. So so why did you stop working? At uh, that? Yeah. How long did yeah. you do it for? Two years? I mean, you're not that old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did it. I I worked in that industry for two years. Um, it's possible I might go back into the industry at some point. Uh, it's just like. I kind of always had known that I wanted to do something entrepreneurial or do something for myself and try to build my own, build my own kind of a thing. And, um, you know, I just, it just felt like a good opportunity to do it. Um, I think, uh, yeah, you know, like I, I think it's better to kind of take chances like that when you're young. Um, yeah. if I was like 35 and I had three kids or something, like, I, I don't know if it would be 
if it would make as much financial sense to do it then. So, uh, no. so know, well, if you're still getting paid, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of like how the agreement works. Um, so it's like it's they kind of prevent me from working anywhere else for a period of time. And then um, in, in exchange for that, like they still pay like a portion of my salary. But uh, yeah, but it's um, I don't know. It's an interesting it's an interesting time. But I think I, I knew that it would be just kind of because of that and because of uh, just the, the fact that I was like a little bit burnt out by the old job. But it would be a good time to uh, to go ahead and try and do something new and, and build my own thing. Yeah. So talk more about the business you have now. Do you have a name for it? Is it Snurf Fit? It is called Snurf Fit. Yeah, it's called okay. Snurf Fit. It's basically, um, right now it's basically just one-on-one -on -one coaching for people in busy jobs, high stress jobs, uh, like similar to uh, jobs like trading or financial services where, you know, obviously like there's, there's stress involved. There's a lot of money changing hands and, um, yeah. you know, it, it can be, it can be stressful for a lot of people. So like finding finding ways to help people in those positions like use fitness as kind of an outlet to not only achieve their goals whether it's losing weight building muscle whatever it might be but also um just you know relieving stress from from the workday too so are you there as like a counselor sort of do they talk to you yeah yeah yeah. good question so it's it, the kind of the way the program is set up there's weekly calls um so yeah, once a week, they have my number um, to text me for, for check-ins. So basically like if there's something they ever need like randomly throughout the week or if they have a question on something, my clients can always text me. Um, but we do also have regularly scheduled check-ins uh, once a week, so. Wow, how long are those for, half an hour? Yeah, 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 usually it's half an hour. Um, there's different kind of like levels to the program and there's different. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's playing the different levels and what you charge and how sure, people get sure. involved. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go into the pricing, but I can explain the different levels. Uh, so there's like, there's different lengths of terms. So depending on like what I hear when I'm talking to a client about like how long their goals are. So like, say a client comes in and they're like, I want to lose like a hundred pounds. Like, obviously that's not going to be feasible in like a short period of time. That's going to be like a, a one year at least type of timeline. So um, that would be like somebody I'd put on like a year long program whereas, whereas maybe if somebody's like, I want to lose five pounds, like that would be shorter, like a three month program or something. So it could, that's like the length of terms is one. And then there's, uh, two different kind of tiers within that. So there's one tier, which is like the weekly zoom check-ins via like video mm -hmm. call, like the one around now. And then there's, mm -hmm. uh, weekly, uh, like video recorded check-ins. So that's like a, a little bit of a lower tier. That's a, more, a little more affordable for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. It's essentially the same idea, the same kind of questions, but they'll submit like a check-in form and then I'll record a video of me kind of like going through their answers, talking through them and send it back to them. So that's kind of the idea of how it works. Oh, wow. And how many customers do you have now? You just started, didn't you? Like a couple yeah, months ago? Yeah, 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 for sure. So the program has been changing a bit kind of since the beginning uh, and I've been kind of adding, mm -hmm. subtracting things, but over, over, the, over that period, I've gotten seven total clients right now um so Hi. yeah 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 so i'm definitely like kind of i'm pretty pleased with like kind of how it's going so far but um yeah. you know it's still it's still a work in progress i'm still trying to uh you know find more find more people who are interested in fitness find more people that i can help um and uh yeah just kind of make it into a more like long-term sustainable type of thing does it matter where your client lives no, not at all. Um, I have clients from, I actually have one client who is set to start in April who is based in the UK. So there are clients, clients from all over the world. Um, mostly, I think most, most tend to be in the US, but uh, literally can be anywhere in the world. I'm happy to work with, you know, whoever, so. So do you ever show them how to lift weights or anything like that? Or is it just yeah. talking about, about their routines, more yeah, like no, guiding no. them? That's a really good question. So it's, it's some of both. So basically like, right, like I'll build them a custom plan specific to their goals mm -hmm. and to their challenges. So like, you know, not all clients even have access to like a gym. Like I trained one client who, uh, she actually does like a band routine at home and, and that's kind of her gym. So like I built a program for her specifically for that. Um, but yeah, I build, I build like a plan for the clients and then the plan, I, I use this software called Trainerize, which is like really nice uh, because it basically has like videos of the exercises kind of preloaded in, but um, clients are always welcome to submit 
uh, like form checks and and stuff like that to me if they want to get like a video breakdown done or if they want to get uh, just like have uh, a better understanding of how to execute certain lifts. I'm always happy to break that down with them. Is it only about weightlifting? Uh, no, not only weightlifting. You know, some clients are not really interested in that. Some clients are yeah. just uh, some clients just want to lose weight. Some clients only want help with nutrition and not lifting or, or uh, maybe some clients want help with workouts and not nutrition or vice versa. So there's also kind of different, I can, I can be pretty flexible with clients in those positions and uh, kind of change the way the package works a little bit, depending on what they need. Um, so, but so, yeah. you're, so you're, so you're guiding them into workouts, what should, what they should eat and how often they should work out. Do you have a, do you have a license for anything to do with, uh, yeah. training or nutrition? Yeah, for sure. No, that's a good question. So because it's not like in-person training in the same way as like you'd be at a gym, it's like you don't necessarily need that kind of a license to start it. I have a certification through, it's called NLCA. It's basically like a business. It's a combined business and also I would say just training knowledge program. So like you learn kind of, uh, so just some more details about like make, making sure you are up to date with the newest practices for like how how often should you be lifting each week how much cardio should you be doing what kind of foods you should be eating etc so i have a certification certification with them through that and then the rest of the program is actually how to build and scale your business and how to find more clients so uh, i do have a certificate certification through that but i don't have like a specific like pt uh certification or anything like that. yeah where did you get that certification from yeah, yeah. So that's is that awesome. online. It's yeah, it's online. Um, so the, the program NLCA is ne Next Level Coaching Academy. Um, so I got it through that. Oh wow! Yeah. So you're really on top of all this stuff, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I definitely believe you know when you're tr kind of diving into a new venture or something you haven't done in life, it's helpful to have good mentorship and good people who know kind of have, have walked the path before you and know what they're doing. So. Um, I've tried to seek that out as much as possible when I've been growing this. I totally agree with you. I'm always researching things about astrology or screenplay yeah. writing, taking classes. So Absolutely. it definitely helps to learn the language of your job because every job has their own language. And I found out that screenwriting has their own language, but it's the same as writing a book, mm. but they use different languages to say the same thing. So it's very interesting, you know? So yeah. that's why it's called a craft. Mm, it is a craft, absolutely. Yeah. It's something you keep learning, kind of like crocheting, you keep learning a new knot, a new thing to make, you know? So it's a craft. So that's yeah. kind of always a good way to look at uh, yeah. what you do is a craft. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you're always, it's always, it's never finished. It's kind of always like in a state of continuous sleep. Just yeah. And, and it's also going to fluctuate with the clients you get. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The more clients you get, the more people you'll, you'll see new difficulties that they struggle with. You'll see new, you'll get new experiences with that. So it's just kind of part of the learning process that way too. I agree. So do you have mostly men or women? Uh, mostly men, but I work with both. Um, so it's not really, uh, I, I believe fitness is, is pretty universal between men and women. And I don't really want to, <laughs> discriminate one way or the other so um, i was just wondering who who was comfortable or yeah. wanted to do what you offered and it seems yeah. like mad. yeah because yeah. when i look at my audience for my astrology it's mostly men too so I'm, like, I'm just wondering if men are more into the electronic world than women are that's all maybe, i'm kind of, kind of gauge I think on Twitter, it generally seems to be more male of an audience, but not always, not always the case. Um, that's actually really interesting about astrology because I always thought that that was more, that's more something that I hear girls talking about than guys my age. So yeah, yeah. Kind of but. but that's why electronically, it's a portal for men to be able to enter and not feel judged. Sure, sure, sure. You know, yeah, I and, like and I think. And I think that's why I was asking is that if you counsel them also, because I think men need to have more one-on-one -on -one interactions in terms of, you know, giving something, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You're giving them something, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, and you kind of, I mean, you're going to make a friendship out of it too, probably, right? Yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, a hundred percent. And I think like, you know, at least like with fitness and with my kind of space, it's like some of the best clients I've had are the ones who I do feel like I've built up like a real friendship with and, and are people who, you know, it's like, I've kind of changed. I've helped them improve not only their fitness, but also like their self-confidence and like that, that yeah. kind of carries into other areas of their life. Right. So, um, there's really, that, that's why I think fitness is really cool. It's like, it, it's not just, it's not just your physical body. It's actually, it trains your mind and your spirit as much as it does your body. So, um, well, well, that's the other thing, uh, people don't understand is, um, working out in any form is a meditation. It is. Yeah, absolutely. It is. You know, a lot of times you see monks sitting on the ground, just humming and they're not moving. Right. But you know, they don't eat as much as we do only eat one time a day. So they, they, they need to relax, you know, they do all the exercise in other ways, sure. but for, for, for the Western society, um, it seems that jogging is a good meditative thing for them to do. And, uh, walking the dog, which I've learned also is very meditative, yeah. you know, going for a hike can be meditative. And so that's why I was wondering if you're injecting that into your yeah. consultation, you know, like, yeah. are you practicing on your breathing because that's so important yeah, absolutely. yeah no it's, it's not a bad idea to include something like that um it's actually it's really funny you, you bring up the idea of workout as meditation because when i was snowboarding this weekend uh, mm -hmm. i made some comments to my friends i finally like it's only like my fourth time ever snowboarding and uh i actually made it down i made it down like one of the blue uh the blue level runs at at killington and i was like without falling and I was like, oh my God, it was actually like a very like Zen experience uh, because I felt like I was just kind of weaving back and forth and you know, yes. not really thinking, not thinking about it, but also just like very present in that moment. So yeah. that is kind of how working out is in general, I agree. That's what happened to me with hiking after I had kids. It was the best way to get back in shape is hiking with little kids, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it becomes very Zen, it's just like, yeah. Or you know you hike like a mile or two with these little kids and you're like oh yeah i wasn't worried exactly. stressed out about anything mm -hmm. and that in itself is a meditative state it's not being stressed you know yeah absolutely. And breathing clean air <laughs> absolutely that's why i was trying to get outside although the wi-fi was not wi-fi yeah. was not very good out there i think it's a lot better now though i don't know about new york city and the clean air though outside yeah that's also fair no you bring up a good point we're about like 25 stories up so hopefully it's not that bad but you, you're definitely right about that you look like you're near uh, wall street uh i am yeah my friend actually lives uh like very very close to wall street so is he, he a trader yeah he's also a trader actually believe it or not i know we live in a world full of traders yeah exactly, uh, exactly but you know that's where all the money is to be made nowadays is that especially with Pluto moving into Aquarius. So I know you are a cancer person, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I looked up your horoscope thing and it's, you know, Mars is going into cancer on Saturday. Okay. So you're going to have a lot of superpower feeling going on. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. And, and since you're a cancer, it should really not affect you in a bad way compared to other people. Mm -hmm. Because cancer is very protective of their home yeah. and everything. So. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good to yeah, know. Yeah, but you'll have that in your favor for a whole whole month to rev up your business. So this is yeah, coming out like. That's good to hear. That's yeah. good to hear. Hopefully, hopefully it's the time. Hopefully April is the month where it really starts to kind of pick up, or end of March, early April. Yeah. Well, yeah, because now people are going to get ready to go outside. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And not it feels actually. comfortable going back to the gym and working out with other people yet. You know. Yeah. Too yeah. People are trying wet. to get in shape for summer and everything too. Yeah. And plus. Yeah, you want to be outside too these days. You were in, stuck inside for two years, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, was there anything else you wanted to touch upon? Not really. I think we kind of we kind of talked a lot about like just the business and and trading and kind of my transition out of there. Um, okay. I don't know. And I got and I got my my horoscope reading, so I'm excited. About that. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it bodes well for the business, like you said. I don't know. Okay. Well, enjoy yourself. Thank uh, you. Make it home safely. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I appreciate that. Okay. So thank you for coming on my show. No problem. Thank you for having friend. me. I appreciate it. Man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.